In this video, I'm going to make some miniature accessories for my Marvel Legends action figures using my 3D printer and some free 3D models that I downloaded from the internet. Let's go! What's going on everyone? This is Dwayne Shoes Toys and today I'm going to be using my 3D printer to make some miniature accessories, weapons and furniture to go along with my Marvel Legends action figures. All of the 3D models that I'll be printing are available for free and you don't really need any 3D design experience to make them. As long as you have access to a 3D printer and the internet, you can build these yourself. So I'm going to go through the process of picking out some models, then 3D printing them, and finally painting them. And once everything's done, I'll do a little showcase and mini review of all the items that I was able to build. I'll be getting my 3D models from Thingiverse.com. This is one of many sites that offer 3D models, but the good thing about Thingiverse is that everything on there is free to download. So let's get right into it. Step one is to pick out some 3D models to print. All right, so I'm gonna start off by searching for items that were designed specifically for Marvel Legends figures, and I'll be putting links to all these files in the description in case you wanna print them yourself. So here we have a Marvel Legends display stand. It has a little peg here to uh, help the figure stand up without falling over. I also found this stand for storing my extra heads, which might be kinda of handy, as well as this stand for storing extra hands. Next, let's pick out a few weapons to print. Now, these aren't specifically made for Marvel Legends, but I can still use them. I'll just need to rescale them to a smaller size. I'm trying to pick up some things that are unique, so I'm gonna go with this Nintendo Zapper. That'll be fun to make, as well as this baseball bat. And I'm also gonna download this Legend of Zelda Master Sword. Finally, I'm gonna pick out some diorama props. We'll get a bunch of different things like these crates and barrels. I'm also gonna pick out some furniture like this table and some chairs. And for fun, we'll throw in some electronics like a computer and this boom box. All right, so I've downloaded the 3D models in STL format. And now step two is to load those files into my slicer program and prepare them to be 3D printed. The program I'm using is called Cura, and in here you can change the size of your objects and adjust the printer settings to suit your needs. For the items that were designed specifically for Marvel Legends figures, I won't need to adjust the size, but the other items, like this barrel for example, will need to be resized. When I'm trying to decide how tall to make an object, I'll basically just look at my figure with a ruler and estimate an approximate size for it. Sometimes I get it right on the first attempt, while other times I may need to print the item a couple times for it to be perfect. Once I've got the sizes set for all the models that I want to print, I'll slice the models in the software and copy the G-code files onto a memory card, which I'll plug into my 3D printer. The 3D printer that I'm using today is the Creality Ender 3 Pro. It's a solid entry-level machine and it gives you great prints for a relatively affordable price. The amount of time that it takes to print an item will vary depending on the size of the object and the print settings that you use. Some of the small items were printed in a few minutes while some of the larger items took many hours to print. One thing to note is that for many of these items I had to use supports to ensure that they could be printed without any errors and these can be removed afterwards. Sometimes they can be a pain to take off but they're usually not too bad. All right, so now that everything has been printed, let's go to the last step, which is gonna to be to clean up the models and then paint them. Uh, for some of them, I'm fine with just leaving them as is. Uh, the display stands, for example, don't really need to be painted, but most of the other items will need a paint job, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Some of the prints will have little stringy pieces hanging off of them. These can usually be cleaned up with a set of clippers, and you can also use a sanding pad or a file to smoothen the surfaces to your liking. Now, before I start painting, I'll first spray a layer of primer on top of the pieces, just to ensure that the paint sticks a little bit better. This isn't absolutely necessary, but it'll often help with the painting process. And once the primer is dry, I'll start painting everything. In this case, I'm just using some cheap acrylic paints. I'm not an expert at all when it comes to painting. I'm still working at it and getting experience. I'll usually just start by laying down a base coat. Sometimes I'll do a couple of coats. Once the base layers are painted, uh, for some of the items, I'll do some dry brushing. And this will make the items look a little bit more natural. 
In this case, I want the item to look weathered and old. And then I'll finish things up by painting on the remaining detail on the items. Okay, all the painting is done, so now let's take a closer look at all of the items that we've created for our Marvel Legends figures. First off, we've got this display stand. This was uh, printed with black filament, so I decided not to paint it. There's an X-Men logo carved into it, and you can see a little peg here for attaching your figure, and it works pretty well. If you wanted to, you can make a bunch of these for all your figures and then put them up on a display shelf. Next, I've got this display stand for all of your extra heads. It seems like it would be a handy item for storing your parts in an organized way. I also made a single head stand, and this would be particularly helpful if you're customizing a head. It would help you hold the part still while painting it. And we've got this stand for all your extra hands. Most Marvel Legends figures these days come with at least one or two extra sets of hands, so this is a nice way to keep them organized or put them on display. You can also place a few other small accessories or weapons in it as well. All right, let's get to the weapons and accessories. Here is the Nintendo Zapper, which is pretty cool. If you grew up in the 80s or 90s, you'll probably remember this. I printed it at approximately three centimeters in length, and it seems to fit into Deadpool's hand almost perfectly. Next, we've got the Master Sword from The Legend of Zelda. I printed this at around eight centimeters in length. Here you can see how it compares to one of the katanas that comes with the Deadpool figure. I printed it out at around the same size, and I think it's a pretty nice upgrade. The next thing I made was this baseball bat. This one was printed at seven and a half centimeters long, and it's a nice little alternative to the weapons that you usually see action figures carrying. Here we've got a boom box. Uh, I didn't do the greatest paint job on this one, but it would still look cool as a background prop, and it definitely gives off some old school vibes. And of course, I had to do an old school personal computer. This model was designed by a user named Rabbit Engineering, and he has a ton of cool electronic designs on his account, even video game consoles too, which is pretty neat. The model for this computer didn't include a mouse, so I had to download a separate file for that. And I also printed out images of a Windows desktop, as well as some drives for the tower here. And I just glued them on after painting everything. So with these accessories, you could have a scene with Deadpool at the office working on something, or maybe playing some computer games. All right, now let's take a look at some of the background props and furniture. First off, I've got this barrel. I tried to make it look old and worn down, and I think it turned out all right. Here's what it looks like next to Deadpool, and uh, keep in mind that you could always rescale this larger or smaller depending on the size that you want. Next up is this crate. You'd usually see props like this in a warehouse or a factory diorama. Well, once again, I tried to make it look weathered. And the cool thing about this particular design is that it has a removable lid, so you can actually take it off and store stuff inside of it. And here's what Deadpool looks like standing next to it. Then I printed this table. This would be good for a kitchen or a dining room scene. I painted it brown to look like wood. And then I printed four of these little chairs to go along with it. I probably could have done a better job of sanding the surfaces, but I was pressed for time and left them as is. This is what the full set looks like together. Here's Deadpool, and we'll sit him down on one of the chairs. I think it would be cool to have a scene with him maybe eating some breakfast or reading a book while sitting down at the table. And finally, I printed out this single chair and ottoman. This would be ideal for a living room scene. Uh, they also had some larger sofas that you could print as well. I can't quite decide if I should have made it a tiny bit bigger. It's sometimes hard to gauge the exact size that an object should be just by eyeballing it, but it looks okay. You can set up Deadpool here and have him relaxing, maybe watching a movie or playing some video games. 
So that was a quick look at some of the items that you can print for your action figures. Uh, the possibilities are pretty much endless and only limited by your imagination. Leave me a comment and let me know what other things you'd like to see me print. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.